Recently, we covered games that let you skip all that time-consuming game stuff so that you can go straight to the final boss, saving us time for our hobbies, such as um, video games, I guess. Turns out that this was something that you, the time-poor, skill-rich outside Xbox audience, had also experienced, as we received tons of comments with examples of times that you too had bypassed most of the game and kicked the big bad's ass straight out of the gate. It's time to share our seven favourites from those suggestions. Please enjoy and beware spoilers for the following games. Tom Clancy's Ghost Recon Breakpoint is a game about, hang on, I know this, uh, fighter jets? No, that's hawks. Sorry, there are quite a lot of these. Give me a minute. Right, sorry, it's a tactical shooter in the long-running Ghost Recon series that sees your special forces crew fighting on the island headquarters of a technology firm where a private military company has taken control. The generations that come after us may forget all about us but they will thrive because of the work we do here. Thank you for joining Skeltech in a rule. Together, we are building two worlds. Your ultimate goal in Ghost Recon Breakpoint, apart from growing a fuller, more lustrous beard than your comrades, is to eliminate Lieutenant Colonel Cole D. Walker, a former ghost gone rogue who has occupied the island of Aroa on which the game takes place. You're a ghost! I'm a wolf. But while Walker is a formidable foe in the game, it's actually possible to take care of him almost as soon as you start playing. On the plus side, this means that he isn't a thorn in your side for the whole game and it spares you a tough boss fight later on. On the negative side, it means much less John Bernthal in your game and we love the Punisher. The method is pretty simple. At the beginning of the game, your team's helicopters get shot down by drones. Your first objective is to investigate the helicopter crash sites, one of which, when checked, will trigger a cutscene of Walker executing one of your squad mates and making his escape. Sorry, Weaver. However, if you investigate the other two crash sites but ignore that one, and then earn enough in-game currency to buy a grenade launcher attachment for your gun, you can then head to the crash site where Walker is. Once the cutscene finishes and Walker goes to get in his helicopter, you can launch grenades at him until the game announces that Walker is dead and the mission Brother vs Brother is complete. Job done. Hardly the most honourable end for John Bernthal, but having seen the Punisher, I know he'd do the same to us. If you have a lair and you call it the impossible lair, then if you ask me, that lair ought to be literally impossible. That's just basic manners. Try telling that to 2D spin-off, Ukulele and the impossible lair, however, because this lair is very much not impossible if you're good enough at ukulele. <laughs> The lair in question is the game's final level and accessible from the very start of the game, and while it is very, very difficult to complete when you're just starting out, it can be done. The way you're supposed to approach this challenge is by playing the game's many other levels, each of which rewards you with a special B when completed. These bees form a shield, which grows throughout the game as you save more and more of them, allowing you to take more hits in the impossible lair when you do eventually try to take it on. Or, if you're in a hurry, you can launch yourself straight into the final level, beeless as the day you were born. <laughs> Ah! 
bereft of bees, you take your chances with the various traps, enemies and bosses along the way. Before finally facing off against the final boss who is confusingly also a bee, and even more confusingly resembles Gru crossed with a minion. You've got some explaining to do, Gru. If you've made it this far through the impossible lair without your bee shield, you should breeze through this boss fight, on account of your unparalleled ukulele skills. Then you escape the lair before it self-destructs. If you manage this almost impossible feat, the game rewards you with a golden tonic that gives you double the amount of quills, the in-game currency, although why you'd need that when you've just finished the game is beyond me. We're busy people. Next. So what shall it be? Do you join the unity or do you die here? Join. Die. Join. Die. Oh, please, what sort of Plan. might that be? A key part of the Fallout games is exploring the open world, despite the open world being a horrible brown wasteland full of radioactive monsters. In Fallout 3, for example, you spend a good portion of the early part of the game searching for info about the whereabouts of your dad, Liam Neeson, eventually discovering that he's holed up in Vault 112. I'm off to Vault 112 to search for anything of bronze that might help me get this purifier up and running. If you know this information already, though, there's nothing stopping you from heading straight to Vault 112, finding your pops, and skipping that part of the game entirely. Son, you've saved me. I was afraid I'd be trapped in there forever. And while this is true in Fallout 3, it's even more pronounced in the original Fallout, in which ostensibly your goal is to find a computer chip for your vault's water purifying system. The controller chip for our water purification system has given up the ghost. Can't make another one, and the process is too complicated for a workaround system. Simply put, we're running out of drinking water. Eventually your goals change and you end up trying to destroy a creature known as The Master, formerly a quite clever human being, now an extremely clever flesh monster, mutated by the forced evolutionary virus into an abomination of stringy meat and CRT displays. My scientists assure me that nothing is wrong. What do you say to that? Say! Say! To be honest, he seems like he's got enough problems, but okay. With the right combination of skill, luck, stealth boys, and save scumming, if you know where the Master's hideout is in advance, you can head over there straight away, to this place where you absolutely shouldn't be at this point in the game. Now all that remains to do is cross your fingers, open fire, and keep going until the melted Ken doll is dead. And that's that. I'd say we'd earned a celebratory drink, but we haven't even fixed the drinking water yet. Probably better if we don't. If you're the final boss of a video game, here's a tip. Don't be standing around in the open world where anyone can take a pop at you. Take it from Helldelf, Lord of Calamity and final boss of Tales of Zestiria. He didn't think he had anything to worry about, just hanging out admiring the scenery, because although some heroic chancer could try to kill him much, much too early in the game, they didn't stand a chance against his incredible power. Or did they? In fact, it is just about possible, if not easy, to run up to Helldalf well before the end of the game and, without so much as an introductory cutscene, launch into an epic battle with this lion man made of purple smoke and eventually defeat him. <laughs> this is a bit of an upset for Helldalf, whose grand plan was to kill everyone in the world. What he should have done was remain safely in the confines of the fortress-like throne of Artorius until the finale, awaiting the arrival of the player and their party of characters. Because now, even if they do beat your ass, Heldalf, at least you do get some cutscenes to explain your grand plan of killing everyone in the world. 
わしは自然の摂理を語っているのだ This final boss fight taking place at the proper time and in the proper location is a better outcome for everyone involved, actually, because if you do kill Heldalf earlier in the game, you get a mega downer alternate ending. In this ending, it is implied that Heldalf's premature death unleashes an even worse, more powerful entity who is now going to, yes, kill everyone in the world. Heard it. Haven't you got anything more original? Listen up! Our target is New Providence. Now, she may look pretty, but this city is full of corporate gangsters, psychopaths, and butchers. We are diving head first into a viper's nest. But I promise you this come tomorrow, we're all going to be walking around wearing shiny snakes. Despite being in development hell for over five years, pretty much the only thing anyone can remember about Crackdown 3 is Terry Crews. You gotta step it up, Terry Crews! The enemy should never see you go! To be fair, he is extremely memorable. What it perhaps should be remembered for is the fact that you can go straight to the final boss of the game as long as you're okay climbing a preposterously dangerous skyscraper to do so. This is Terra Nova main headquarters, the offices of the game's main antagonist, Elizabeth Niemand. A more normal playthrough of Crackdown 3 would have you eliminating her three captains before heading over here, weakening her defenses and giving you an easier ride up the tower. Infiltrating this tower now is ill-advised. It'd be wise to isolate Nagata first by eliminating the Enforcer Brigade around the city. But if you fancy your chances, you're more than welcome to give it a go from the off. Just get ready for all kinds of enemies and robots and clouds of choking poison gas. Oh, and also because you haven't collected any of the series' trademark agility orbs, the climb's going to be much harder as well. Persevere, however, and you can make it all the way to the roof of the skyscraper, where Liz will be waiting for you in a big flying robot snake thing, along with a bunch of her double hard minions. You will die with all the rest, but I will have eternal life. Obviously, this is a hard fight if you've just started and have no upgrades or cool weapons, but the only thing tougher than a flying robot snake is the human spirit, and as such, you better believe this power-suited poseur is going down. what I call a hostile takeover. All right, five years of development, 45 minutes of actual playtime. Not a great ratio, if I'm honest. Cosmos, the goddess of harmony. Chaos, god of discord. Two divine powers locked in an endless struggle, each seeking to reign supreme. Dissidia Duo Decim Final Fantasy was doing transdimensional crossover events years before the MCU got in on the multiverse shtick. Which is how Lightning, Tifa, Yuna, Laguna and more wind up summoned from their separate realities by mighty gods locked in an eternal war between Discord and Harmony to do a bunch of fighting. We won't last that long. We keep taking orders from you. The other warriors aren't coming. This kicks off with Lightning getting her orientation day training from a lone Moogle, who talks her through the basics of the combat system and such. Do you not have anything more deadly looking that could be teaching me how to fight things? No? All right. This being your first gig in a strange new universe, you're probably going to want to stay humble, keep your head down and learn what you can. Or alternatively, as the tutorial draws to a close, you can get all cocky and tell your Moogle trainer that actually, as it happens, you're already a Dissidia master and see what happens. Wow. 
what happens is the irritated Moogle dumps you instantly into a battle with the game's ferocious final boss, a winged monstrosity by the name of Feral Chaos, who is level 130, while you remain a level 1 noob who couldn't finish the tutorial without mouthing off. Who are you watching? It is just about technically possible, if not likely, that you'll triumph over the game's final boss at this incredibly early stage. Win or lose, you will end up back where you started, face to face with a Moogle, for a telling off about your braggadocious ways. Alright, alright! Man, they'd never do this to me in my own universe. Where I'm lightning, the best one. We spoke in the last video on this topic about how Nintendo's sprawling open-world epic, The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, lets you go straight to its final boss, Calamity Ganon, who presumably is still in his bathrobe and slippers because he thought he had about 70 more hours to get ready. And while the developers definitely made it trickier in that game's sequel, Tears of the Kingdom, it is still possible to go straight to the final boss much, much earlier than the game would like you to. It does take longer, Tears of the Kingdom has a longer tutorial you'll need to make it through covering the game's Great Sky Island, and you'll need to acquire the game's new powers, plus you'll need to get the paraglider from the Lookout Landing Skyview Tower. But once you've got these things taken care of, there's nothing stopping you from sprinting straight to Hyrule Castle and flinging yourself headfirst into the depths of Hyrule Castle Cavern, where Ganondorf is to be found. I say there's nothing stopping you, but when you get down there, there will be plenty of things trying to stop you, because the game will throw everything at you to make things as hard as possible. For a start, you'll need to face four waves of Ganondorf's army, which is going to be hard if you haven't been collecting heart containers or good weapons for like 30 hours. Then, like in Breath of the Wild, because you haven't done the previous dungeons, you're faced with a boss rush of all the bosses from those dungeons, totaling six consecutive boss fights. Then, and only then, do you get to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the big man himself, which again, good luck with that. How about this? But on the plus side, even though that was a gruelling nightmare, you have just managed to bypass the entirety of the much-anticipated video game you just spent $70 on. Wait. Those were seven more games where you can go straight to the final boss, and what I've learned in this video is that when you say layer enough times, <laughs> it ceases to have any meaning. I can no longer say layer, impossible layer, or ukulele, and the impossible lair, layer, layer, and make any sense of it. So that's my gift to you. Layer. Yeah, there's that. Andy's broken also now. <laughs> Liar, liar, liar. Uh, let me make it up to you by recommending this video from Outside Xbox, or even this video from Outside Extra, our sister channel, who make equally good videos. Lair. Lair. He's, he's got it. Anyway, awesome. enjoy and try not to think about the word lair.